What I'm going to show you in this video is how you can make your own sepia colored decal out of supplies that you might already have in your studio. First, we will take ordinary copy paper and turn it into a kind of water slide paper. Then I'll show you how I set up my printer to print the best image that I can get onto that water slide paper. After that, we'll take the water slide paper with the image on it, and I'll show you how with an ordinary art supply, you can turn that into a decal. And of course, after that, I'll show you how you can take the decal, put it onto a pot, and fire it. Now, this is what the decal that we're going to make looks like. And this is what the final image on the pot is going to look like. Okay, so let's get started. Now the first thing one has to do is to make a solution of gum to put onto the paper, which will turn the ordinary paper into a pseudo water slide paper. Water slide paper is what the industry calls their basic deco paper. And what you do is you start with some CMC gum I put in a teaspoon into about 10 tablespoons of water. And I ended up with this, which is pretty thick. It's a little fixotropic in that when you stir it, it'll flow a bit, but that's basically what you want. So from my printer, I'm going to take a piece of ordinary copy paper. And I'm going to brush on this CMC water solution. I put it on fairly thickly. I don't worry about getting it super smooth, but I do wipe it in a few different directions. And having put it on, you're set. I think I should add that you can, in fact, use other gum solutions. This one, for example, comes pre-mixed, and I use it uh, for other purposes I found that when I put it on copy paper to try and make water slide paper, it did in fact work with two coats, but um, I also found that it wasn't quite thick enough and that um, when I rubbed off the paper from the decal that I made, it was rather difficult and didn't work as cleanly as the CMC solution that I used. 
Now, what I do is take it and put it in my drying chamber under a heat lamp. I do my drying in my spray booth. I've got the paper on the table, which is about 20 inches, 50 centimeters below the heat lamp. It, it can be closer. I'm going to leave the paper for 10 minutes to dry. And as you'll see, it will be almost completely dry. Since we are making sepia decals in this video, you should know that you do need to have some equipment. You need a computer with some graphic software and a printer that has ferric oxide in the toner. This is the dried CMC coated paper. As I hope you can see, there's a little bit of dampness still. It's been about 10 minutes, although I didn't actually time it perfectly. You can also see that there's a little moisture coming through on the back where it hasn't dried completely on the top. You'll also notice that it's getting fairly wrinkled and um, if you try to flatten this with, by putting some paper on top, which I initially did, it will in fact stick to the CMC gum. So what I'm going to do is put it under glass. As you probably could see, there's still a little moisture there, uh, but it is somewhat flatter. We now want to print on it. We open up the printer settings of Adobe Photoshop, and here you see we've selected the proper printer, and now we're going to change and ensure the print settings are what Will produce the best image. Going down to printer features, we see we've got plain paper. Just leave that the same even though it's now your water slide paper. We choose print options and make sure that the printer is going to put out the darkest image possible, which is five. One out of five, five being the darkest. We next choose to print quality, and we choose the highest resolution possible so that we get the densest image in terms of dots per inch, 1200 in this case. We save that, that becomes our default. In the color management area, we allow the printer to manage the colors, and we make sure that the rendering intent is saturation. Once again, this is to make sure that the image we print is as dark and as saturated as is, uh, as is possible so that after it is fired, we get the best possible results. Click Done and that will save that setting for your printing. So here's my printer, LaserJet P1102W. We'll put it in and I'll go to my Photoshop print. Here it comes.
It's a little flatter now because it's gone through the heat. Looks pretty good to me. So we will now proceed to make a deco from this in the next step. Before we go on, I want to point out the difference that we made by changing the printing setting. The one that we just printed was set at five, but when you print it out at three, which is the original setting, you can see that it's much lighter. It's the density, all of your prints, to maximize the quality of the image. Now we're going to make a decal by putting a cover coat layer on. By applying a layer of gel medium. You want to make sure that you cover all of your decal image and beyond the edge so that when you cut out your decal, it will be all safely transferable. You want the cover coat to be fairly smooth, but you don't have to be overly concerned about that. Just brush it out as best you can. You'll find that moisture will pass through the paper onto the back and it will feel moist. This will dry in time. I don't know if you can see, but it's getting rather heavy, thick looking. And uh, I think this being the sixth coat that I will just stop after drying this. And I'll probably let it dry overnight for at least a few hours. I'm going to cut out this image here to put on our pot. And you don't have to be particularly careful to cut close, although there's no reason to cut far, far away. But uh, unlike many commercial decals, when you use the gel medium, you're not getting a fluxed cover coat and therefore it won't leave any marks. Unlike the flux cover coat will leave a shiny surface and you'll be able to see the edge where you cut it. And so if you're using those, you need to cut it close and cleanly. So we'll put it in the water. You see it curls at first a little bit and then flattens out. And when it's wet enough, about 30, seconds, 40 seconds. It won't slide like commercial water slide paper will, but you will be able to rub the paper off with your thumb and just peel it back and get rid of it very cleanly without leaving any behind. If you left paper behind, it would interfere with getting the toner tight against the glaze. Likewise, if you forget which side is up and put the acrylic side down against the glaze first, then the toner will not get through the acrylic when it fires and it won't work at all. So. You need to get the acrylic side up and the toner side down. 
this brush has some gum on it from before. So just put a little bit on. Put the toner side down. Move it into place. This acrylic layer that we've made is quite thick and quite strong. You can use your thumbs to flatten it out and get rid of the water but and the bubbles, but it's always best to use a nice tool like a rib. Make sure that there's no air bubbles because the air bubbles will, just like the paper, get in between the toner and the glaze surface and it won't adhere properly. As you can see, the decal has been successfully fired onto the surface of the pot. It was fired at cone 04, being a cone 6 glaze, and it has melted into the glaze such that it is firmly affixed and does not rub off at all. And as you can also see, it is a very good image. <laughs>